everyone and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver and my guest today is Dr. Anne Danley. Welcome. Thank you. Anne is a developmental scientist. She has a master's degree from, uh, in psychology from the University of London, England. Mm -hmm. A PhD in psycholinguistics from the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. She also did postdoctoral studies in psycholinguistics mm -hmm. in the Netherlands at the Max Planck Institute. Anne was on the faculty of the University of Southern California for 15 years with a triple appointment in psychology, linguistics, and health sciences. Mm -hmm. Her research has been supported by the NSF, the Spencer Foundation, the March of Dimes, and others. Mm -hmm. She was also a consultant on children programming in Los Angeles. Anne is also a published author uh, of two books on language and cognitive development, both for Cambridge University Press. Mm -hmm. She's currently an adjunct faculty at UC Davis in the psychology department. She's a long time meditator and meditation uh, teacher, a mother of two children, both of whom both are now at university and she lives in South Davis. Welcome again. Thank you so much for having me. Her website, I must say this straight away, Insights for Parents is an invaluable go-to digital repository of the most current information on parenting, on meditation, mm -hmm. on gratefulness and uh, mindfulness, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the site is uh, regularly updated with new mm -hmm. articles and uh, Anne's blog is a collection of small gems. <laughs> Thank and you. it is beautifully organized and very easy to read. Again, thank you so much for being here with us in the studio. Thank you, Lynn. Um, well, I'm really looking forward to finding out a little more about all the <laughs> things you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, my first question is, uh, is there any insights in particular uh, that you think uh, you'd like to share with us? One, perhaps, that you think is important to, to, uh, to share with us. Oh, what an interesting question. <laughs> um, <laughs> an insight. You know, I think in a way there is. We parents spend a lot of time noticing how our children are different from us. Yes. We're very aware that they don't think in the same ways we do necessarily. They don't always understand. The way they interact with others isn't always as sophisticated and uh, it's not the same as how we do. And their ability to regulate their emotions isn't as mature. So we're really aware of these differences. And we as parents and as developmental scientists are interested in looking at how children change. But underneath that, there's actually a core of commonality that I think is profound. That is interesting, yes. And um, we all, as human beings, have the same basic needs. We want to be loved. We want our gifts to be seen and appreciated. We want to be respected. We want to be happy. Yes. And I think if I could offer one insight alone, it's to just help parents remember that they and their child are the same in some really basic fundamental ways. Well, this is uh, really key. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it is very difficult to be a parent. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and uh, that brings me to mm -hmm. perhaps my next question. And uh, what comes to mind is, uh, is parenting and family life uh, different in this new mm. millennium as compared to what it was maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. Can you tell us about that? Actually, there, it is different. And the How obvious so? difference, it's the technology. So Meaning. when you think about the way that we are so connected technologically, it's impacted the way we structure our lives. So we human beings have long had 
um, engagement with others, social engagement, and we communicate, we're storytellers, we narrate what happened during our day. Yes. And um, when we did that face to face, we enjoyed a kind of synchrony. In fact, we even had chemical synchrony. We had oxytocin synchrony, right. which, which <laughs> actually meant that we were um, having these wonderful neuropeptides cascading through us that calmed us down. Yes. And today's life doesn't offer very many opportunities for that. You don't get that synchrony when you're texting. So how do you compensate? So how do you compensate? I yes. think that what one has to do is to recognize that we can't always be online. And we have to actually consciously take time for real interpersonal interaction, to get outside, to shut down, to give our eyes a chance to rest, to give our minds a chance to rest, and to really connect on a really personal basis. Yes. And to have less structure. Less structure, that's very mm. interesting. Um, a communication and talking to the children and asking mm. the children to recount what they've been doing. Right. Is that important? It is. Yes. In fact, one um, thing that if, if I could ask parents to just kind of be mindful to do one thing, it's to have dialogues with their children. Yes. There's been a lot of research recently that shows that children who have conversations with their parents, yes. which means turn taking back and forth, have enormous benefits. It actually even impacts the brain. It mm -hmm. builds thicker neural mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. in the parts of the brain for mm -hmm. thinking and language, mm -hmm. but it also enables them to understand reading material and other things. So conversations are actually super important. And this is perhaps uh, one of the most difficult uh, uh, goals to attain these days because of the lack of time, because mm. uh, uh, the the media, the television, mm -hmm. the the iPads, and so on are have a function of babysitting sometimes, I and do. and that is very difficult. So it is very important that you stress this uh, for for us. Um, what. Uh, Give me an example, for example, give me an example of how you can encourage or inspire uh, communication and when during the day, for example. Anytime. Anytime. You know, uh, when you're reading to your child, um, especially if you're reading a real true storybook as opposed to a, an e-device story, yes. Yes. Um, asking the child, no matter yes. what, they, uh, what age they are, you know, do you remember when we went to a park like this little kid did? Yes. Or what do you think would happen next? So just using mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. talking, I know it's the old fashioned thing, but talking at the dinner table, maybe at least some of the time That's having right. meals together with devices off yes. and chatting, chatting in the car chatting before bed yes you know downtime when the room is dark is a great time to interact yes and get those blue lights off well that's uh, yes and and it's a very simple common sense it thing is. to do uh, but uh, it's it really is very important to remind mm. us mm. one of the things i'm wondering about and that this is um is there what are parents interested in knowing these days? Oh, well, <laughs> if I were to sort of reply, what, what's the thing I'm asked most about? Yes, yes, okay. that's exactly what Self -regulation. I'd like to Self-regulation. Every parent <laughs> wants their child to become responsible and Absolutely. to regulate their behavior. And it doesn't matter if the parent is looking at a preschool child who um, they're hoping will take a little responsibility for some things and perhaps not be too aggressive in preschool or whatever, or whether you're talking about a teenager um, where you're hoping that the teenager will begin to evaluate the risks of possible activities and weigh yes. them well. Yes. So I think... That's probably what parents well, it, care most you know, about. It, it, uh, it's quite interesting because um, it seems a little unfair to the children <laughs> yes. and to the teenagers as well mm. because you have to learn self-regulation and yeah. sometimes it's up to the parents to mm -hmm. be role models. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree with me? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, 
parents need to be role models. They need to scaffold their yes. child's development. And they also need to realize that the brain, that ma the part of the brain that manages all that executive function isn't mature until, now get this, about age 30. Oh. We used to say 18, <laughs> I'm then not 24. Then. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> all right. Um, would you say, can you give us some suggestion? We are rapidly running out of time. Mm. 15 minutes go very fast, Thank unfortunately. Yes. But could you give us uh, some suggestion for those parents who want to feel good about themselves mm. and want to feel confident that they're doing the right thing for, your chil for their children? You know, above all, you probably know more than you realize. That's what I'd like to tell parents. Oh, good. But um, the two things that I think parents can do to support themselves, know a little bit about child development so you know what's typical at different phases. Very, very good. Very well said. But also take care of yourself. Okay. No one deserves your love, your friendliness, your self-compassion more than a parent. Yes. So you can't take care of someone else until you can take care of yourself. Your role modeling love, your role modeling kindness, self-compassion. If you show that to yourself, you're teaching your child. That's what we want our children to feel, and you deserve it. And if you have that, you'll feel more comfortable as a parent. Uh, it's so very reassuring. Do you work with parents on a on an individual basis in your practice? Actually, I do. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the website, I give talks and workshops, mm -hmm. but I also do meet privately. Um, it's not counseling. It's not therapy. No. <laughs> it's, um, it's sort of uh, who are you going to call when you have a question about yes. what's going on and how yes. to support development. So um, in a way, I do sort of private parent education, mm -hmm. and I do parent coaching where I can work for a few weeks, um, mm -hmm. accomplishing some goals and helping parents help their children. Um, why do you do this? Uh, I love children, I love parents, and I feel honored to have gained so much knowledge and experience, but I really, really, really want to share it. Well, that sounds wonderful. and. Uh, I can only say that uh, your expertise and your many years of studying and mm. writing are very, very valuable to the community and to all of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Anne Dunley, for taking the time to be with me for a little while. And I'm afraid our time is up. So uh, thank you again. And for all of you watching us, thank you so much and join us again next time.